Thank you very much, Antonio. So next, uh, we'll have a brief introduction of our institute. Uh, Professor Carlos de Cañizo will present the main research lines very briefly, and as well as the research lines more focus on, on the line of uh, storage. So, Professor Carlos. Well, uh, warm welcome in a cold Madrid, talking about high temperatures, so we have the whole range. And uh, I want to take this opportunity to just uh, very briefly uh, present uh, who we are at the Solar Energy Institute. As Professor Luque has said, the, we have, uh, this year we have um, celebrated our 40th anniversary from the formal constitution of the Institute. And I uh, we'll just try uh, to, to show you or to tell you how we have uh, come to the uh, ultra high temperature thermal energy storage as a research topic in our institute. We are a research center belonging to the Universidad Politecnica de Madrid and uh, fully devoted to the photovoltaic conversion of solar energy. We are no, not such a big center, we're around 70, 60, 70 people, including professors, uh, postdocs, PhD students, and supporting staff. Uh, Professor Luke is uh, honorary president. Um, I am the, currently the director, Ignacio Anton, the vice director, and Ignacio Reistoli, the uh, secretary. We have three campuses, and this is uh, also for you, for those of you who are going to visit uh, today, uh, this afternoon, the facilities in Getafe, just to know that we are here in the headquarters, in the Escuela de Telecomunicación, uh, but we have also a part of the activities more related to the PD systems in another uh, schools from the university in the Campus Sur uh, near Vallecas, and the facilities that are more related to silicon in the uh, Tecno Getafe, in the Technological Park in Getafe, and uh, that is where the Amadeus prototype is and what you are going to visit uh, this afternoon. Uh, we have uh, three main research lines in photovoltaics that go from short-term to long-term research, and uh, we like to say that they are particularly integrated in the sense that we are not tackling all the topics, uh, but uh, those who, who that we address, we want to go from the material to the system that happens in conventional PV technology, mainly crystalline silicon, uh, in which we have uh, uh, work on the purification of the solar cell development and uh, on the module and on the uh, PV uh, plants on distributed generation of grid and also uh, energy storage uh, with batteries and now with uh, these high temp temperature thermal concepts. We have a strong line of uh, research historically on concentration PV, once again, uh, covering the um, high efficiency multi-junction solar cells, tandem solar cells, and also modules, instruments, and systems. And we have a long-term uh, research on new concepts. Uh, one that brought a lot of attention recently was the integrated land solar cells. Uh, we're working also on nanostructures for photovoltaics in the thermophotovoltaic cells and applications and the space solar cells. And in this, uh, uh, well, we have a range of equipment. You will uh, see some of it uh, this afternoon that, uh, as I say, go from lab type prototypes for silicon production, a uh, whole line for solar cell manufacturing, epitaxial reactors uh, for the highest efficiency and the novel concepts uh, for solar cells, characterization uh, set up for materials, uh, uh, devices, 
test benches indoors and outdoors for CPV for concentrated photovoltaics and also for uh, flat plate uh, PV systems and also we have a building integration example a solar home system that it's like a living lab for uh, demand management now in this range of uh, infrastructures I want to uh, draw the attention to uh, the activities in term of thermophotovoltaics that have brought us uh, to the, where we are now uh, at the end of the uh, Amadeus project they began really uh, in the early uh, 2000s and uh, with this virtual integrated approach um, we have tackled TPV from the um, device processing with the epitaxial reactors for uh, both a metal molecular green epitaxy and a metal organic vapor phase epitaxy uh, the rest of the, the, the furnaces and so on to make the uh, layers and devices uh, the cells uh, the encapsulation in modules and different uh, applications and showing an example now of uh, one of them that is uh, has to do with waste heat recovery and here we have a small uh, say prototype uh, that we tested in the facilities that uh, Ferro Atlantica uh, have in Coruña in, uh, in Galicia in Spain uh, Ferro Atlantica is one of the leading companies in metallurgical silicon production and so we could uh, test uh, what was the energy recovery that we can have uh, when exposed to the melted silicon that they have there and uh, that uh, connected to the idea of uh, why not using silicon as a storage material as it is uh, as a, such a high light and heat, heat as compared to other materials that can be used for that uh, thermal storage uh, with the challenge that it uh, has to it melts at uh, 14, 14 uh, degrees Celsius and uh, that is uh, why the idea of combining uh, this high density thermal storage with uh, thermophotovoltaics could be a good uh, compromise and that was well, one of the first uh, let's say designs of what we were aiming at for this thermal storage at uh, the beginning that has uh, evolved and that uh, gave birth to this line of research in which uh, we think there is a lot of potential and a lot to do and a lot to do from uh, collaboration as an emerging field I think it's very important uh, that we could all put together uh, the knowledge to push uh, the community and to push the uh, idea and to make it a reality that's uh, what we're aiming at so I uh, wish we all have a successful workshop and thank you very much <laughs>